So today I wanted to show off some of the features of how I actually built um, the ray casting in the trailing edge. And this is just a very short demonstration of how this technique works. Um, in the game, you are tasked with picking up items and they have some little bits of narrative attached to them. Um, but I wanted to show how I got the ray casting in Godot to work and uh, how I was able to kind of get this effect to be so consistent. So come with me. All right, so we're going to set up our Raycast demo right now. Um, and the, a couple of things that we want to be aware of and a couple of things that you should be aware of is that I'm gonna be using some resources that are being pulled in from a previous project. The main one that you should be aware of is this player scene that I'll open up really quickly. This player scene is um, basically, uh, you can see it's kind of multiple nodes of different uh, collision shapes uh, and a pivot with a main camera attached to it and a kinematic body that's kind of uh, working with all of this stuff. Um, this kind of rig, this kind of first person camera rig is basically directly inspired by and directly built from the Kids Can Code. Um, tutorial for creating a first person rig that I will link to in the comments of this video. Uh, big shout outs to Kids Can Code. They're really great. Um, they have a lot of amazing uh, Godot tutorials that I would highly recommend. Um, so I'm going to be using this resource in the script that I've written uh, along with that. Um, you'll actually notice that there's some things in the script already built in here that I need to kind of set up for myself uh, before we even get started. And I'm also going to set up the uh, interaction button that I need to set up uh, within my project uh, for these inputs. Cool. So let's go ahead and bring in that player scene into uh, this scene tree. So I'll link that scene by just bringing in my player. And I'm going to make this player local so that I can gain access to this main camera. Cool. All right, so let me go ahead and set up that input stuff so that when I'm wanting to actually work with this rig and walk around and make sure that it's functioning correctly, that it will do that in, in the way that it's intended. So I'm gonna go up to project, go to project settings, and I will go to input map, and I'm going to uh, add, right, some new actions. So I have move forward, move back, straight left, straight light, right, and UI cancel. So I'm gonna keep these up invisible while I am adding these input maps. I'm also gonna add an interaction. Mm, yeah, I'll just leave it, or maybe I'll make this a little bit more specific. I'll say player interaction. I'll say okay and then I'm going to add another physical key there and I'm going to use the E key because I find that to be a really good convention to work with. So I'll close that. I'll go back to my Raycast demo and in order for me to check to make sure that this uh, is going to work properly I'm sure that my mouse look is going to be working okay but I want to be able to walk on an actual floor here. So I'm going to add a mesh instance and I'm going to set the mesh property of this to be not a cylinder, but a plane. And when I was kind of setting up this project, I found that 20 by 20 was a really good kind of starting size. I'm going to hit the one key on my numpad to get the kind of front orthogonal view. And I'm just going to move this plane down below my uh, player so that I know that the player will rest on top of it. And I'll kind of rename this floor while I'm here. And then while I have my floor selected, I'm going to select the mesh tab here. And I'm going to create a tri-mesh static body, which will attach a static body node and a collision shape node, which will take the mesh instance as the collision shape. So let's just go ahead and see if this is going to work the way that I want it to. So I'm able to look, right? And I'm using WSD to move around. Excellent. Okay, great. So now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to make a very just simple interactive object. So I'm going to go click on my Raycast demo, hit uh, Control A to add a new node, select another mesh instance. I'm going to name this box and I will make that mesh to be a cube. 
and I'm going to open up the properties of that cube by clicking on it. And I'm going to say the size of this is 0.5, just to make it a little bit smaller in my scene. I'm going to use uh, just either the select or the move tool to move that around. And I think while I'm here, I'm also going to just like set this to have a unique material attached to it. So I'll just make the default color of this something nice and bright red. Cool. So when we're using ray casting, we want to use a ray cast that's coming directly from the camera uh, in this instance. So when I'm uh, creating a first person camera rig that has a ray cast that you know is basically being cast in the direction that I'm looking in, I want to have the ray cast to be from the camera origin. So I'm actually going to select my main camera, my main cam, which is part of my player scene. And I'm going to add a node to this called Raycast. And I want to be clear that I'm selecting the spatial Raycast and not the 2D Raycast. So I'll click Create. And what you can see actually is that when you create that Raycast, it is going to show actually a cast from the negative Y position. And I think that that's just that's how it, 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 by default, that's the direction that it goes to. But I'm going to set the cast to property in the node from, I'm going to remove the Y, and I'm going to set the Z property because I know that that's the, right, the direction that I want. And I actually want this to be in the negative Z. Okay, so I'm going to say, I'm going to start with negative two. And you'll see that, that kind of cast, this kind of visualization of that cast right, shows us that we're extruding from the center of the camera. When I have my raycast, the way that raycasts work is that they are casting, if you will, a, a beam, uh, a, a collider beam in the direction, the cast direction that we've assigned here, and it's looking for other collisions in the scene. And so when it's casting that, uh, we want to set a specific collision mask for it to you know, basically pick up, right? So right now, if I have my collision mass set to one, anything that's set, any collision that's set to be on the, let's just look here in the static body, any collision that's set to be on that one layer is going to return a, you know, a collision, right? And, but I want to be more specific with that. I want my objects to collide, right? Or I want my cast, excuse me, to collide with only specific objects. So for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to set my collision mass to be on layer four, okay? Just because I find that to be very clear and concise that it's on that layer. And so what I want to do is that for my box, I'm also going to do the same thing that I did for my floor. I'm going to add a trimesh static body, and I'm going to select my static body here and say that the collision for this is also on the fourth layer, okay? So that that layer, now my cast, when it's colliding with that object, that should return the correct value. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to attach a new script to my raycast here. So I'll go ahead and attach a new script. I'm going to just make this an empty template. And I'll say raycast demo. Uh, that might be confusing. So raycast... Uh, I don't know, Raycast seems okay. Maybe I'll just do Raycast Interact. All right, so what I wanna do is that I want to get the uh, properties of this Raycast and I want to check to see if it's colliding and that if it's colliding with a particular type of object then to you know basically do something with that object. But at the very, very start of this, I'm going to just check to see that this object is colliding with what I think it is. So I'm going to say function, um, and I'll say that this is process, uh, fix process, or physics process, sorry, delta. And then I'm going to say uh, if, right, I'm going to create an if statement, and I'm going to say if self, which is pointing to the raycast, right, is colliding. Right? So if the raycast is colliding with something, start to do something. 
So I do that by getting the collider that I'm colliding with. And I'm going to use a variable to store that information. So I'm going to say var collider equals self get collider. Okay. And so what I can say is that uh, I can determine what this collision is and see what it's basically attached to. Now, this is the thing that kind of threw me off when I first was starting uh, this process and that what you're colliding with is not the object itself, right? It's not the box itself, but it's the static body, right? Because this is the thing, this is the node, I should say, that's holding the collision, right? So if I want to access the box itself, I need to kind of go one node above or the parent node above what I'm colliding. So I'm going to create another var that's going to be called, I don't know, obj col, maybe the, the object that I'm colliding with just for short. And I'm going to set that to be collider.get pair. Uh, oh, I'm going to say collider.get node. And I'm going to say the node above, right? So what this is saying is just whatever node is the parent of this node. I guess I could use get parent here too, get parent, right? I believe that should also work. And that will get me the object that I have collided here there. And just, just to see what I'm working with, I'm going to say project, excuse me, print object col. The one last step that we want to do before uh, making sure that this works, and this seems so fundamental and elementary, that it's something that I even just like forgot to do in the first time that I was kind of recreating this project, is that I want to make sure that my Raycast is enabled. Uh, by default, our Raycasts are not enabled, which I find to be odd in the way that the node kind of exists. So now that I've enabled my Raycast, and I've checked to see that I'm colliding with something to make sure that both the raycast is set on the correct collision mass and the box static body is also on the correct collision mass. Let's just see what that does. So I approach the box and you'll see box mesh instance 1270, right, which is the ID of that mesh gets printed over and over and over and over and over again, right? So uh, that is Excellent. So what I want to be doing is that when I've gotten this information about what the collider is, I want to use this collider. I want to be able to interact with, you know, basically now that I've collision, now that this raycast is collided. And I want to use uh, the kind of pickup technique that I showed at the very start of this video. The way that I implemented this pickup technique was by attaching a hold object or attaching a spatial node to my Raycast to say, once uh, I've interacted with this thing, I want to then assign that object to, uh, to be a child of a spatial node here. So I'm just going to select a spatial node. I'm gonna add this spatial node to the Raycast. I'm gonna call this hold position, okay? And I'm gonna make sure that that's, I'm gonna move that just a little bit in front of the camera. But what I wanna do is that I want to, when I've successfully raycast and collided with this object, I want to then be able to use that interaction that we had to then reassign the box item to be a child of my hold position. So let's go ahead and do that really quickly. So the first thing that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just comment out um, my print. I'm going to say if, right, input, I always forget the syntax here. I think it's input is action, yeah, is action just pressed. Okay, and I'm going to use uh, player interaction. Cool, great. So what I wanna do is that I want to first uh, assign the location of my object from where I picked it up from. Because when I want to release this object, you know, I want it to go back to that location. So I'm going to say if uh, this action is pressed, I'm going to create a var that's called old position. And that old position is going to be uh, object col. And I'm going to say get global 
transform. And then I'm going to say var old rotation is equal to object col, and then I can say rotation degrees. And then I think I need to, I think that that's a function. Is that correct? Oops, object underscore col. Okay, great. So in order to now relocate this object, right, this object coal that I've collided with to be parented to the hold position, what I want to do is that I want to load the hold position node that I have here, right, as um, a kind of variable outside of this function. So what I'm going to say is that I'm going to say var hold position or hold POS is equal to git node and I'm going to just look for that hold position. And again, keep in mind that this raycast interact is right right here is attached to this raycast. So hold position is a child of that. So I can just go ahead and get that easily. So I should also probably say that this should be on ready, right? Because I want to designate that variable even before this um, process is starting. So I'm going to uh, basically remove this node from the parent and reassign this node to be a child of the hold position. So I'm going to say object, oops, object col get parent, uh, and then I'm going to say remove node, and the node that I want to remove is actually object col. So I'm getting the parent node and I'm removing itself from it. Um, and then after that, I'm going to say object, I'm going to say hold position, add child, and I'm going to add object col. All right, so let's save this and see what this does. So I have collided with the object, right? I know that this is a pretty good distance and I'm gonna press E. Okay, rotation degrees, that's not a function, it's just a property of that. So let's restart here. Okay, so let's remove node is not, oh, uh, I think it's remove child. Sorry about that. Let's try that one more time. Again, I'm I'm still trying to you know wrap my head around a lot of the uniqueness of the syntax of of Godot, but looky there. Okay, so now I can hold this thing in. Uh, it's now attached to uh, my raycast. Actually, it's now attached, or it's attached to the hold position that I have. Now, why does it look so weird? The, the reason for that is that it still is storing the previous information, the previous transform and rotation information uh, from when I picked it up. And so that's not super helpful for us. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to reset that information when it is now added. So I'm gonna say object col dot transform dot origin is set to a vector three because that's what our X, Y, and Z position are. And I'm gonna set those to be zero, zero, zero. And I'm gonna say my object col uh, rotation transform, I think I could just say rotation degrees actually. Rotation degrees is equal to vector three, zero, zero, zero. Cool. So let's see what that does. So I picked this up and now, right, this thing is, is I'm carrying this thing in my hot little hands. Now I have a bit of an issue where, right, like uh, it's now permanently attached, right, to uh, my player character. Uh, that's kind of unhelpful. So I, what I want to do is that I want to basically, you know, uh, continue that Boolean, right? So I'm going to say, uh, if I've uh, done this action here, I'm gonna set a Boolean that says basically like it's being held. And then I'm going to set a Boolean that says, you know, uh, turn turn this off. So what I could do is that I can set a var on ready, on ready var is held. And I could set that to be false. 
right? So that when this player interaction happens, and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna add a condition, and I'm gonna say is held is equal to false, right? I can kind of make that claim there. Um, no, not in held, is held, right? So when that's false, right, I'll then say is held is equal to true. And then I can make another if statement, or I can make a, um, I guess I could make another if statement. Maybe I could do an, an elif if I wanted to. Um, it seems like an elif would be a good decision to make here since I'm kind of using the same logic here. So if input is action just pressed, right? Um, player interaction and is held is true, then I'm gonna remove this object from hold position and put it back to be on the parent. I'll say object call, or I'll say hold position, remove child object call, right? And I will get the root, I'll say git node, uh, let's say, I can kind of do it this way, root uh, raycast demo, and I can say add child, and I'll say object call, and then I can set object call transform dot origin to be equal to old posts and object call dot transform oops transform oops, I'll just say the rotation degrees right uh, rotation degrees is equal to old rot old rotation so I'm getting this error here uh, oh this should be a colon, not a semicolon. Cool. Um, the identifier old position is not declared in current scope. Okay, so we might want to declare these something outside of this. So I'm, I'll say on ready var old posts and on ready var old rotation. And then I don't need to declare them as variables here, right? Because I'm just resetting them. Let's see how this works. So interact with it, set it back up. Oh, let's see here. Um, on base transform with the value of type transform origin old position. Ah, I, I need to set it to be the origin, right? Because I'm setting it here to be just the git global transform, which contains everything. But I just want to get right the origin of that. So that was my bad. So let's see. Right, sets it back in place. And again, just to kind of, for our own edification here. Oh, uh, you'll notice like I'm pressing E and it's not letting me re-pick this up. And that's because I need to set, right, uh, is held to be back to false. So let's do that and I'll kind of show what I was just about to show, which is that, right, when I pick this up, I can really move around and now when I let go of it, it goes back to the initial position, right? And now that I've reset that to be uh, true or false, right? Now I can do that. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna take the hold position and that hold position actually seemed pretty good to me. It was maybe a little bit too close to the camera, but we can always tweak this. But what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna add an animation node here that's basically just constantly rotating. So uh, to give that kind of little bit of extra flavor, that little bit of extra kind of gameplay juiciness. So while I have hold position selected, I'm going to hit Command A and I'll look for animation player. And I'm going to create, that should have your animation tab pop up on the bottom. I'm gonna create a new animation that's just called, I don't know, something like rotate could be spin, that's what I started with. But I'm gonna have this happen, I'm gonna make sure that this is on autoplay by clicking this little button here next to the name of that, so now it's on autoplay. And I'm also gonna make sure that this loops by hitting this kind of loop icon here at the end. 
And I'm going to say that this rotation takes place, I don't know, maybe over six seconds. Let's say that this entire thing takes six seconds. So I'll select my hold position. I'll go to transform. And I'm going to key my rotation degrees. And I could say I could create a reset track. I don't need to worry about setting Bezier curves. I actually want this to be linear because I want it to be nice and consistent. So I'll key that. And then at the end of this, I'll kind of move my playhead to be at the end of this frame. I'll set my rotation degrees to be 360. And I'll keyframe that so that now, right, between these two, right, you can kind of see the number in my rotation degrees change over time. Cool. So that when I actually add this to be here, right, we'll see that it will kind of be rotating by default. So we don't see that, right, until we interact with it. And it's just kind of rotating. It's just like, oh, great. This is what this object looks like. And then I can set it back and it's back to its original location, right? That might be a little bit too fast. I might want to slow down that animation by just extending the amount of time. Now, the last thing that we want to do is that we want to be able to add our highlight, right? That was a, a nice little feature that I had. And this is something that ha that Godot actually has built in that I think is just kind of incredible. Um, I'm going to go select my box and I'm going to select mesh. And I'm going to select Create Outline Mesh. And it's going to ask me, how big do I want this outline mesh to be? Now, I think the last time I used this, I think I set this to be 0.1. And I think that that seemed to be pretty good. Now, yeah, that does seem a little bit big for uh, what I have here. Um, so I might, I might want to redo that. So I'm, I'm going to select that outline mesh. right? I'm going to turn that off. And let's try that again. To select outline mesh. So yeah, so seemed like 0 0.5 was something that was really good. And then what I could do here is that I can select the mesh instance, go in to select the material, select a nice, you know, kind of you know, maximal brightness material. I could even I think when I did this in my example, I turned uh, emission on. And I turned this on to be, you know, kind of make sure that it's, you know, kind of all the way white, you know, cool. So this is by default, I'm going to rename this to, I'm going to call this highlight, because I think that that's the way that I did it. Um, so this by default is on, right? So we're going to turn this off. And we're going to use our raycast to be the thing that basically turns this on and off. So let's go back to our code. And I'm going to say that when is colliding, and I'm going to say if this is colliding, right? with the correct thing, that then I'm going to turn on that highlight. So I can say var highlight right, is equal to uh, object, oops, sorry, object col dot git node. And I'm going to look for highlight. Because again, this is a child of that top level object in that node tree in that segment, I should say, of the node tree. And then I could just say that highlight, oops, highlight.visible uh, equals true. OK. Now, uh, what I need to make sure is, is that uh, when this is set to be uh, not colliding, that if this is else, then I want to make sure that that highlight is set to be off. So what I could do here is that maybe yeah, maybe what I could say, again, do the same thing that I did for my old rotation and old position. I could just kind of make this a more accessible variable. And so if you know this is true, then you know we could say highlight on is off. And then to just save on some time, because I understand that not highlight is sometimes going to be blank, so it won't know how to pass this, I'm going to put another if statement here. That's going to ask if highlight is not set to null. And if it isn't set to null, then make sure that highlight.visible equals false. Oops, false. It will check to see if highlight is actually you know, filled, right? The variable is filled with information if it isn't null. And if it's filled with something, to make sure to turn it off if we're not colliding with it. So let's see what that does. So. Oh, when I collide with this, 
So that's, that's, oh, I misspelled highlight right here. So let's correct that. So it turns on, turns off, turns on, turns off. Great. And now when I select it, I still have that highlight on it because obviously my Raycast is still hitting it. So what I've done is that, uh, no, put back in the position. So what I did is that when I have it picked up, I'm going to basically uh, not turn off the highlight because that's going to mess up the logic that I have here, but I'm basically going to shrink it until it's invisible. So when I have my object here that's held, I'm going to give myself a little bit more space here. And this will be the last thing that we do uh, to kind of polish this off. So I'm going to say highlight um, scale, oops, scale equals vector three, zero, zero, zero. Basically, I'm just making it, you know, infinitely small. So that it would not be visible. This might seem like a very cheap way of doing this, but oops, silly me. I want to set this back to what its original scale is. So I guess I can kind of get that. Um, I actually know that this, I can actually set this back to be one, right? Because I don't think I've modified anything about that. So let's just go ahead and see that that um, works as intended. Yep, exactly, right? So when I pick it up, the highlight turns off, right? Or it doesn't really turn off per se, uh, but it you know kind of shrinks down into invisibility. And then when I let go of it, it resets the highlight. But if I'm not raycasting it, it doesn't turn it on by default. Okay, great. So hopefully that has given you some uh, ideas about how to you know use this um, method of picking up objects using ray casting and assigning them to be attached to your camera. Um, in this instance, you know, kind of walking around with this object might be exactly what you want. Um, it might not. It depends on all what you're working with. Um, obviously, there's a way to also modify this that, you know, if you wanted to, you could just kind of detach this as an object and have it drop wherever it lands as opposed to go back to the original location. It's totally up to you. Um, but I wanted to just show the way that I'm utilizing it in my project, The Trailing Edge, and hopefully you found this to be somewhat instructive. Thanks a lot. Take care.